Hi everyone, I'm Taylor and welcome to the Tribe Lives 30 Day Yoga Challenge. Today is day two and for today's class we're going to focus on lengthening our bodies, so lengthening out our legs, our arms, our bodies, um, and then melting into the mat for some deep relaxing stretches. So when you're ready, roll out your mat. We don't need many props, I always recommend just having some blocks and a blanket on hand if need be. Um, otherwise, roll out your mat and we'll begin. Okay, so for day two, we're gonna start in child's pose. So you can start with your big toes touching, your knees wide. I like to spread them pretty wide, like mats distance apart. And then pressing our hips back, reaching our arms forward, our head and forehead reaching down to the mat. I'm just feeling the stretch on our side bodies, our front side body, our front body, and reaching back with our hips. And so as we arrive here on our mat, I welcome you to just start tuning into your body, to your breath. Noticing if you're taking deep breaths, looking to expand and breathe through you the back of your ribs, the back of your lungs, all the way to your lower back. Just taking deep breaths here. And then tuning in with our body, noticing if anything in particular is standing out to us. Maybe there's some extra tension somewhere. So just noticing, you know, taking inventory of your body and then, and then checking in with yourself mentally as well. So notice if anything in particular is coming to mind and um, noticing the thoughts that pop up. And then I mentioned this in day one's class, but thinking of it as if it was a physical object, as if your thoughts were physical objects like a plate that you could pick up off your mind and off the mat and placing it just outside, knowing that it will be there for you at the end of class. It's also a practice of just letting go that which is no longer serving us or not serving us in this moment. And then finally, I invite you to set your intention. So again, I mentioned this in day one, but for intention, it's just something that you can um, focus your attention on during class. So maybe it's a simple um, let go as a reminder to continuing to just place and drop the things that are no longer serving you, things that we don't need right now for our class. And also with this just being the beginning of the 30 day challenge, the beginning of a new year, maybe there's a specific category or something like your health or relationships or even your job that you're hoping to you know, make some changes in or create some clarity. So maybe that's your intention. And I encourage you to use the same one um, from day one as throughout the practice if that's something that feels right to you. If something in particular is standing out today, you can use that as well. So just taking a few more breaths, releasing into this pose. Then you can slowly rise up to all fours and working to Work the palms underneath the shoulders, the knees under the hips. Again, always working to lengthen that spine, spreading our fingers nice and wide, all 10 fingers. And then taking that left wrist, slowly rotating it out to the left and then back behind you so the fingers are behind you. And if this is painful, you're like, what? No, no way. <laughs> that's totally fine. Maybe, maybe it's just a little bit rotated and that's enough for you. Or maybe you can't even straighten your arms all the way and that's fine too. Um, we're just looking for a stretch on that front forearm. So finding whatever works for you there. And you can always rock forward and back for an extra stretch as well.
And then switching sides, releasing that wrist, rotating that right wrist out to the right, fingers back behind you, and just rocking forward and back. And always pressing down through all five of those fingers as well. And then releasing that hand again, pressing down through all 10 fingers and working on lengthening the spine. And as we're here, we'll step back with that right foot. So stepping back with that right foot, flipping the toes under and just rocking back and forth, stretching out the calf, lengthening through the leg, pressing through the heel. And then as we're here, we'll slowly slide that right foot over to the left, outside the left foot, maybe off the mat as well, and just staying here. Then as we continue to lengthen through the top of our head, long spine, and then slowly looking over our left shoulder, back at our right ankle. Keeping the shoulders forward, just breathing into that right side body, pressing into that right heel. And then sliding everything back to center. Releasing that leg, coming onto the other side. So stretching that left leg back, flipping the toes, rocking forward and back to that left heel. And reaching through the top of your head and then sliding with that left foot over to the right, outside that right leg and off that mat. Reaching through the top of our head, long spine here, rocking forward and back. And then again, keeping that long spine and then looking slowly over that right shoulder with just your head back at that left heel. Pressing through that left heel and just feeling that stretch on the left side body. And then coming back to center. We can flip our toes, pressing back to downward facing dog. So taking a moment here to walk out the dog, really warming up the body. I like to think of downward facing dog as a very fluid pose. Doesn't need to be so static and rigid. And just maybe swinging the hips, maybe rocking the ankle side to side, just stretching out our body, feeling the warmth in our muscles. You can rock forward and back from plank to down dog, loosening up the shoulders and the arms. Taking a few more breaths and then we'll inhale, lift that right leg up and back. And then step that right foot forward, coming to warrior one. So for warrior one, we're dropping that back foot down at a 45 degree angle and rising up with our chest. A few more alignment things. So the feet are on two planes, like you're on two skis. And if this is kind of hard to balance, you can always separate your feet a little bit wider. So that right foot's closer to the right edge of the mat and that left foot's closer to the left edge. Again, back foot pressing down to the outer edge of that foot and hips are squared to the front. So pulling that left hip forward a little bit as we lift our arms and shoulders up and back down our spine. And the feeling as if someone is lifting us up from the bottom of our rib cage as we lift up, rising up. And then we'll open up to warrior two. So rotating our feet, front heel to back arch alignment. So now our feet are in the same plane. Back foot's parallel to the back edge of the mat, pressing down through that foot. Front heel, um, front knee over front ankle, shoulders over hips, rolling them back and down, reaching from fingertip to fingertip. Gaze is strong over that front middle finger. Dropping that back arm down, reaching that right arm up and back. Reverse warrior. And 
and then bringing that right elbow to that right thigh, left arm up and over, creating a straight line from that outer edge of the left foot all the way through the left fingertips, opening the heart to the sky, and we're lifted in that right side body. The abs are engaged, not sinking into that shoulder. We're lifted, reaching. And then rising back up to warrior two. Windmill your arms down to frame that front foot, stepping that left foot forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Staying here for a few breaths. So you can grab opposite elbows, rocking from side to side. Shaking out the head, yes and no. Sometimes we don't notice we're even holding any tension there. So loosening up that and maybe rocking forward and back a little bit, shifting the weight. Again, if forward folding is difficult for you, you can always use blocks to prop yourself up or the back of a chair again. So focus on lengthening through the top of your head and that will create the stretch behind the back of your legs. So we'll bend the knees here, taking our time, ragdoll the arms, so just letting them loose and hang and taking our time, rolling all the way up to a standing position. No rush. Rolling the shoulders up and back down your spine. Inhale, reaching up to the sky. Exhale, hands to heart, pausing here for a breath. And then inhale, reaching up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, stepping back to plank. And you can uh, lower all the way to the ground here or bending the knees, releasing all the way down to the mat. Flipping the toes under, inhale, low cobra. Exhale, flipping the toes, pressing back to downward facing dog. And you can always pull th push through child's pose as well if that feels better for you. So taking a few breaths here, again, walking out that dog, lifting the hips up and back, pulling the navel in, pressing through all five fingers, or all ten fingers. And then lifting that left leg up and back, stepping it forward, coming into warrior one on this side. So checking the alignment, that back foot is Pressing down at a 45 degree angle. Hips are square to the front and your feet are on two planes. And you can pull them as wide on that mat as you need for balance and pulling that right hip forward, squaring the hips. Pressing down through the outer edge of that right foot and then lifting up through the arms and chest as if someone were pulling you up from the rib cage, the bottom of your rib cage. Lifting up, lifting. Breathing. And then opening up to warrior two. So adjusting the feet, so now your feet are on the same plane, the front heel to back arch alignment, pressing down to the outer edge of that right foot, and it's parallel to the back edge of the mat. Shoulders over hips, reaching from fingertip to fingertip. Gaze over the front middle finger, and sometimes you might notice we lean forward in this pose, right? We want to keep it back, so just keep that in check, shoulders back and down. And then dropping that back arm, lifting the left arm up and back, reverse warrior. Dropping the left arm onto that left thigh, right arm up and over. So we're in a straight line from that outer edge of that right foot through the right fingertips. Heart is opening to the sky 
and we're lifted off that left side body, not sinking into that shoulder, we're lifted. back up to warrior two. You can windmill your hands down, framing that front foot, lifting that back heel, stepping that right foot to match the left. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Again, staying here for a few breaths. Rocking forward and back, shifting the weight into the front foot and back foot, just noticing how that feels different. And then releasing your arms, you can Bend the knees, ragdoll, rising up, taking your time, rolling all the way up to stand. Again, no rush. And rolling the shoulders up and down. Inhale, lifting your arms up to the sky. Exhale, hands to your heart. Pausing here for a breath or two. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, walking back to plank. Again, lowering to the ground, bending the knees, or just lowering all the way down. Flipping the toes under so the tops of your feet are down and palms under shoulders, hugging the elbows in, peeling up to low cobra. Releasing down, pressing back to downward facing dog. Again, walking out the dog, taking your time. Release in the knees, pressing back to child's pose. Stay in here for a breath or two, checking in with your body. Noticing how it feels now as opposed to the beginning of practice. And then coming back up to all fours. Again, bring the shoulders or the palms under the shoulders and the um, knees under the uh, hips. And then pressing the weight into our palms and our knees, right? Working to lengthen the spine here. We'll shift our weight slightly into that left palm. Um, We'll shift our weight slightly into that left knee as we look to lift up that right leg up and back and we're flexing the foot here, really reaching through that heel and working to square the hip. So maybe lowering that right hip an inch or two. And if this feels good, you can stay here or shift the weight slightly into that right hand, lifting the left arm up forward and reaching from the tips of our left fingers all the way back to the heel of that right foot with a long spine. And then releasing both of that down. Come to the other side, so slowly shifting that weight into that right knee, lifting that left leg up and back, flexing through that heel, reaching back, and again squaring the hips, so maybe lowering that left hip an inch or two. And then shifting the weight into that left hand, reaching that right arm up and forward, stretching from the right fingertips all the way through the left heel, reaching here, a long spine, lengthening, and then lowering both of that down. We'll come to a nice seated position. You can bring your leg down in front of you. And flexing your feet here, again, maybe 
um, removing the flesh from the sits bones, just sitting nice and tall. You can always, again, take that blanket if it's near you, folding it a few times, propping it up under your hips if sitting tall here is a little difficult, just helps to elevate the hips. And with the feet flexed, we'll inhale, sit nice and tall, reaching your arms up to the sky. And then exhale, forward fold. And so maybe you're here with your hands on your feet, your ankles or shins, or maybe you're just placing your palms here. Another thing here, as we work to always lengthen through the spine, folding with the heart, is if you have a strap, a towel, or you can even use your blanket to wrap around your feet. And as you inhale, sitting nice and tall, you are here wherever you are, right? So we're trying to stretch the back of our legs here. This is not a lower back stretch per se. So lifting with the heart, and then as you pull in with your chest, you'll feel that stretch. And you don't have to bend your back or, you know, um, yeah, roll or bend your back here. Just simply lengthened with a long spine, just leading with the heart. You get the same stretch, same feel. Actually, I would argue this is even a better stretch because sometimes when you're rolling like this, it's just tension on your lower back. So, releasing your hands, you can come back up, hugging that right knee into your chest. And just focus on sitting tall here, right? Hugging that knee in, reaching up through the top of our head, bottom leg is flexed, and then stepping that right leg up and over the left. You can place that right hand outside the right hip. Inhale, lift that left let arm up to the sky, and then bring the left elbow outside that right thigh as we gently twist over to the right. And coming back to center, you can release that leg, switching sides, so hugging the left knee into your chest this time, sitting tall, flexing that bottom leg, reaching tall through the top of our head, and then stepping that foot over, and again, bringing that left hand outside the left hip, sitting tall with that right arm up to the sky, bringing the elbow outside the left thigh, twisting over to your left. And as we're twisting, we're still flexing through that bottom right foot. And coming back to center, releasing that foot, bringing the soles of your feet together. Coming to butterfly. So um, thinking about this like a book. So you want to have your feet open like a book rather than squashed together like a sandwich, right? And so we're opening up just the outer edge of the feet touching and bringing your hands behind your feet. And thinking about your pelvis here. So if you have a round spine, your lower back's kind of rounded, sitting tall and then leaning forward with the pelvis, rocking it forward. You can also prop it up with a blanket behind, that helps as well. Um, so play around with that. And then as we inhale, lengthen through the top of our head, we exhale, bending the arms out to the side. And just maybe you're here and you feel that stretch in your groin, in your inner thighs. You wanna keep that long spine. And then if you can fold deeper, you can do that over time. Just doing where what feels good for you, but keeping a long spine here, breathing into your inner thighs, breathing into the tension. And then releasing the feet. You can hug your knees into your chest. We'll rock back and forth a little bit. Just that's a nice lower back massage sometimes. Rocking forward and back. And maybe the next time you roll up, keeping the shins parallel to the ground, reaching the arms out, lifting with the chest, long spine. This is boat pose. For those who do Pilates, you've done this before. And just staying here lifted. Taking one more breath and then slowly looking to lengthen the legs and the chest. Rising all the way, 
releasing down to the ground. I always shake when I do that, so maybe you do. Totally normal. It means you're working hard, right? So we'll stay here, and then bending the knees, uh, feet on the ground, knees to the sky. Bring that right foot up and over outside that left leg, keeping that foot flexed to protect the knee, and then reaching with that right arm inside your legs, left arm outside the left thigh, reaching back behind that left thigh and just pulling it into your chest. And maybe for a deeper stretch, you take that right elbow, sliding it out inside that um, right thigh and just pushing that away a little bit to open that hip. And so although your arms are engaged, pulling the legs in, the shoulders are relaxed away from the ears. So none of this, right? Releasing it down. And we're long, we have a long spine here. So even though we're pulling our legs into our chest, we wanna keep the lower back on the ground. Really working to open the hip here, feeling that stretch on our, our right hip and our glute mostly. So we'll take one more breath where you are. And then releasing that leg, switching sides. So bringing that left foot outside the right leg, flexing that foot to keep it, um, to protect that knee. And then bringing that left arm inside both your legs and your right arm outside that right thigh grabbing behind that right thigh and pulling your legs and your knees into your chest here. And again, maybe you take that left elbow, sliding it into that inner thigh of that left thigh and just pushing it away, opening that hip a little bit more. And with our shoulder, our arms are engaged, right? But our shoulders are away from our ears, long spine, bottom, um, the lower back is on the ground as well. Just. Working to breathe into that left hip and left glute. And then releasing that leg, you can release that leg, releasing your arms and your legs. Hugging the knees into the chest, maybe rolling clockwise and counterclockwise. Nice lower back massage. And then we'll come into happy baby. So opening the knees, bringing the arms inside the legs, grabbing the outsides of the feet. And then pulling the knees into your chest, nice and wide. You can stay here maybe rocking to the right and to the left for a nice lower back massage. And when you're ready, you can come back to center, straightening your legs out, dropping the feet away from each other and arms down by your side, palms to the sky. Taking a deep inhale through your nose Exhale out your mouth. And you can always pause the video here to take a as long of the Shavasana as you'd like or just stay with me and for the next minute or so we'll continue to breathe and just relax into our mats and I'll bring us up to finish class together.
slowly start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Reaching up over your head, stretching from the tips of your toes up to the fingertips. And taking your time, rolling onto your right side body and pausing here for a breath or two. And slowly making your way up to a nice comfortable seated position. Taking a deep inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Inhale, reaching your arms up over your head. Exhale them into your heart. I always close practice with a moment of gratitude, thinking of one thing you're grateful for and holding it in your heart. And allowing a big smile to come across your face. Thank you for practicing with me today. Have a great rest of your day or night. Namaste. Congratulations, you just finished day two of the 30 day challenge. If you stuck with me since yesterday, congrats, that's two days down, 28 to go. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up down below and send this to a friend or a family member who you think might enjoy it. Um, it's always fun to have a yogi buddy for challenges like this, so share the love. And thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for day three.